everybody hear me? Give me a thumbs up. I think so. Most of you. Wow, so many. This is great. This is great. Uh, I'm ex I'm extremely excited to be hanging. This is the most people. It actually kind of scares me. I've never. Uh, uh, this is yeah. This is this is the closest proximity I've ever had to this many people in over sixty days. Uh, so I have a little bit of uh, OCD about how close we're all to each other, but this is all fake, so I have to like let that sink in. But anyways, um, it's kind of weird that we're all muted because I was going to ask questions. I realized maybe that's probably not. How about this? What we, we can, can do unmute is people. I'm going to ask. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. We can I unmute people unmute. as they go. Right. I just don't want it to be like a complete nightmare city with everyone trying to speak. Uh, but what's great is most of y'all have your names. Yeah, I think everybody does. Stuart, Peggy, Living Room, Kelly. <laughs> um, but so first off, thank you for even trying to write anything. I'll be honest, in the last two years, I haven't written a, a damn thing. I've been super busy with opening a restaurant. And now that it's closed, I sort of have to go back into channeling uh, teaching artist Rachel Self, which is um, something that I've always loved to do, but just never really find the time for. So this is exceptional. And, you know, this is benefiting me more probably than y'all. Um, but I was, I was thinking about what to write because, holy smokes, we've all been probably self-quarantined for quite some time. Um, we're sick of our surroundings or we've gotten too comfortable with our surroundings. I'm not sure, but I know the one thing that has changed for me is my body. Uh, I've been eating a lot of home cooked meals with a big Appalachian grizzly man who does nothing but Southern cooking. So I've actually probably, I'm, things aren't fitting anymore and that's fine because I just plan to sort of spread out all over, all over my household. Um, but uh, I, was, I was thinking a lot about how we are dealing with our bodies in this time and was also considering what, what part of my body probably gets more attention than it ever has before. So I want you to think about that for a sec. Like, let's talk about, I don't know if we have to talk about it, but um, who, has, uh, who, has, who has, what's the loneliest part of your body? Let's think about that for a second. Hmm. Hmm. This doesn't make any sense to me, but it does, I promise. Let's talk about it. Unmute yourselves. Raise your hand, I'll call on you. Who has a lonely part of the body? <laughs> hmm. Yes, Peggy. My hair, it needs a cut. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Anyone, yes, Lynn. I would have said the same thing. I just cut my own hair yesterday. And I don't know that I would consider it lonely because it's getting an awful lot of stress and attention. And uh, <laughs> it's, you know, it was just getting so shaggy, I couldn't cope with it. But the real issue is I'm turning white. <laughs> yeah. And I have about three colors of hair. I have the, the faded out dye job. I've got the new white. <laughs> And now I've got the original, much darker brown growing in. So I, I hate hats. I look stupid in hats. And I will wear hats. <laughs> <laughs> Understood. Anyone else? Yes, go ahead, Anne. Unmute, Anne. Unmute. Hmm. There, we go. there you There's go. You're supposed to be able to hit the space bar to unmute, but that doesn't seem to be working. Um, my lonely Some part of the body lies. is my, the hugging part, like my shoulders and my back, the part where you get someone's good arms around you for a good squeeze. Oh, that part of me is lonely. That's so real. Hmm. How many of us are enjoying our, our time with just our bodies and no one else's? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's a real truth too you know I think it's important uh for us to sort of recenter ourselves in this time uh as as not just you know humans but writers and really consider how to better I don't know interrogate 
the self uh, in, in positive ways, of course. I'm not here looking for self-indictments, but uh, I noticed that I'm just taking more time and I'm understanding stillness in a way where, that I've not formally allowed myself to. And uh, I think that having time with the body is important. Um, and I also come from a culture that spends a lot of time uh, or specifically like the regionally in um, the part of Mexico that my family was from. They have a lot of catacombs in uh, Guanajuato, Mexico, and the bodies were very present, even the dead bodies, which I thought was, it always scared me when I was young, when I would think of the pictures and all of the catacombs that they had over there where the bodies were stacked because uh, the Spaniards took away their their land and they had lost places of burial, which is something, you know, you don't really think of. So they would place the dead in trees in their full suits and floral crowns and all of that. And it was just a spectacular thing. And um, I'm trying my best to get reacquainted with my living body. I think that I spent so much time uh, as a survivor and as someone who has had a wronged body in this lifetime to look at it as a victim separate of myself and sort of kind of divided myself away from it. And so I'm trying to return myself, pull myself back into the body. And I think that as, as writers in a time of a global pandemic, uh, to really think about not just our present selves and how we wish to change things once we're allowed finally back out into the wild. Um, what would we keep? What is your favorite part of your body? Anyone? What's your favorite part? <laughs> Peggy again. My hair. Uh, <laughs> same as what? Say it again. Sorry. My hair is still my favorite part Can you of my body. Repeat that. It, my hair is still my favorite, even though it's lonely. It's curly. It's wavy. It's bushy. It's out of control. I like it. Anyone else? Katie. I like my thighs. Um, I've been riding my bike a lot to uh, work off stress. And my partner happens to have a weight set that is in our living room. And so I've been doing squats. So they're not only, you know, what's been doing stuff. It's like what I notice most often. Sure. Like a strength that's kind of like mm -hmm. pushing through. Sue, did you want to say something? I felt like Sue had been waving. I could be wrong. Yeah, no, I don't want to put correct. you on the spot. You're correct. My favorite part is my mind. Mm. I've been spending a lot of time during mm. this period going back and thinking through some of the movements I was involved in, some of the organizations I was involved in. Yes. Things like that. And I've been checking in to see how they're doing today. Um, I've been spending a lot of Zoom time with, ki with women who are in the younger generations, finding out what it's like for them compared to my generation. I'm in my 70s. And it's been, and these kinds of measurements have been fulfilling. So I, I, I appreciate my mind. Do we have a forgotten part of the body, anyone? What have we forgotten? Um, it was funny that Katie said thighs because I was going to say for forgotten my inner thighs because I'm not walking around as much, so they're not rubbing up against each other as much. <laughs> <laughs> good, good. Lynn, I think you had something you wanted to add? Uh, my, my fingernails. <clears throat> I've just been working more at home and, and just hard on my nails, and for some reason or other, I just can't be bothered with fixing them up. So they've never been very funny to begin with, but when they're real raggedy, that's too bad. <laughs> so, so I'll get to them. Anyone else want to share? I, I will. Go ahead. I, I was going to say that <clears throat> they kind of go hand in hand because my um, favorite part is my belly. I didn't really have one until about 10 years ago. <laughs> And I didn't realize how it makes it wonderful to, because I can cuddle myself now and I live alone. <laughs> ah, yeah. And my hands are never cold. I you love know, it. I always can warm my hands. 
but in the same place, it's also my forgotten because, well, let's just be honest. I'm not exactly sticking to the vegetarian menu <laughs> and my belly's <laughs> feeling it right now. I'm like chocolate chip cookies at 3.30 AM. Why not? So. Yeah. I know time is, I mean, who cares about time? I, I, I'm right. My, my diet has changed so incredibly and um, I'm just really, I'm really grateful that I know that um, it, even though I have chronic pain, I have fibromyalgia, I have a lot of issues with my body as a former uh, gymnast also. Um, I, I'm just learning to really settle in in a way and be more appreciative, especially of um, the belly that I also didn't have for so long. And now I have, and I can tuck my phone under my fupa and just have a, a nice little nature's pocket there, <laughs> which is totally ridiculous and ripped off from uh, Broad City. But nature's pocket is one of my favorite things ever. Um, but I want to get into some prompts for a minute because, you know, I think now that we have the body fully on our minds, uh, which is which was the point for today. Um, I want you to write down, I want you to pick five parts of your body and write a brief history for those. And I want them to seem kind of like, you know, little little biographies or little histories or say what you would see in the old, if any of you remember what the TV guide, it would have a synopsis of what, what episode was coming. Um, I would just want you to write down the five parts of your body that you think you can write the best brief histories about. And um, so write those down. I'm going to write them down too. I've never done this prompt. So I'm going to do it alongside with y'all. My... Then I want you to write down three inheritances that your body th that your body had was given. What three things did your body inherit? You don't have to think too literal if you don't want. The same things. Three, three, three things that your body inherited. Anyone want to share an inheritance? Go ahead, Twyla. Um, bad eyes, bad feet, and curly hair. 
Now, what makes someone have bad? What's what's bad about feet? Um, well, Does anyone love their feet? Do you like your feet, Twyla? <laughs> I do, I do. But um, I have a bunion on one side, and that, and then I walk a lot. So sure, it can cause pain. But right, I love I'm good. <laughs> anyone else? What did you inherit? I am always slightly pink. I inherited that from my mom. My cheeks are pink um, normally. And then if I go out in the sun for even two minutes or work up a sweat, I am pink for hours and hours. Ooh, I understand that completely. Rita, I think you raised your hand at some point. I just discovered there's a whole other page. I didn't even see you, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh, I can't hear you, Rita. Uh -oh. But it's a computer thing. Um, like there you go. Okay. Rita, do you want to type it into the chat text? We could see it. In yeah, the you chat can text definitely now. do that. That's a great idea. Thank you, Matt. And I'm so sorry I didn't see that there was a whole second page I could scroll over to. I am a bimbo. For those I don't even know what that word means, to be honest. I've only ever heard it in re reference to Chrissy Snow. <laughs> For those of you unfamiliar with Zoom, if you put your pointer on your square, you will have three white dots up in your upper right-hand corner. And if you click on that, you can mute and unmute. Okay, I also see that yeah, you could definitely answer questions in the uh, in the chat if needed. So before we keep writing, I want you to also write down three memories that the body holds. Your body specifically. And consider where you where those those memories are stored. A lot of us carry stuff up here, like between the neck and the shoulders, or in the lower back, carry a memory. <clears throat> And again, you can absolutely make up stuff. You do not have to <laughs> be absolutely literal. Ooh, legs. Yes, Rita. Huh. And then name two places where the magic is held. <laughs> the magic? Yes. The capital magic. <laughs> the capital M magic. It's okay to be dirty. <laughs> I think we're all adults here. If we're not, I apologize. <laughs> And as you're thinking about the body, as we're trying to reroot ourselves back into ourselves, I want you to think about the magic and uncertainty of memory and often how it gives way to the fantastic, allowing our stories to inherit dreamlike qualities of the subconscious. And I want you to explore how the body also uh makes those kinds of i'm trying to think of the right word rachel, here. rachel would you mind saying that again absolutely um so one of the things that i want to talk about as well because i believe ultimately that the body and the body has its own memory right um i i, I believe that wholeheartedly and i think it's it's it has a lot to do 
you know, I mean, it's just our, it's almost like our storage facility, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think that the uncertainty of memory, the ways in which we allow, say, something fantastic to take place of something maybe, say, before we were able to, like, before, when we were pre-verbal as children, we experienced moments, and when we couldn't grapple, like, we couldn't particularly language that moment, something filled in the blank for us. It, and that's like, you know, where the imagination pretty much like takes, takes front and center. And um, the magic and the uncertainty of memory gives way to that. Um, it allows for our stories to change over time. And I believe that our bodies too kind of uh, learn to adapt to whichever story we hang on to. And I'm really trying to dissect these days which stories I wish to continue holding in the body um, mm. and which I, 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 I need to let go, to allow out of, to purge from the body. Because I think that I would have much better posture, less credit card debt, probably less tattoos, <laughs> had I not allowed the body to be the cold storage for so many things that weighed me down like i don't you don't want to be anchored right by by negative energy and i don't mean to talk like some goofy granola witch but it's kind of like what i am anyway <laughs> uh sans granola more like chocolate pudding but um i think that for us to push our art beyond the boundaries of truth we it's a it's important to allow the magic to to be that like great voice inside of our bodies and so by doing that i want to consider to how we are willing to be in you know investigators of the body and are willing to be witnesses of our own bodies and also advocates for our own bodies <sighs> i go on tangents i'm trying to keep it really short i promise so um i want us to think about how we can allow uh new voices of our bodies to speak so let's go back to our prompts of the brief histories five parts of the body that we want to write brief histories for it could be three to six lines for each i want you to include a fact right three points of magic for that and an inheritance um and if it wasn't something you'd already written and you're of the three things you inherited make it up um but i want you to think about um, how to tell the story of a body um, that a child would believe. Fuck adults. <laughs> Who cares about what they believe? I want you to tell a beautiful short story of five different parts of your body that a child would believe. And so by that, I just, you know, I, I think about, say, my mother. Um, I fully believed that when she screamed, I, I saw her hair grow three inches longer. Obviously it wasn't a fact, but also it was my truth. And, you know, Tim O'Brien talks a lot about, uh, you know, the data versus the story truth um, and how it's, it's completely, I think it helps tell the truth when you allow the magic to also take place in your storytelling. So I want you to just reimagine your bodies as these particularly, I don't know, more magic vessels than tragic always. Uh, I'm probably talking too much. I, there are no rules to this prompt, by the way. I want you only to write five brief histories of these five body parts. And um, I want you to be as fantastical as possible. So let's spend, I don't know, how much time do we need? 15 minutes? And we'll do 15 minutes. And as you're writing, as you're writing these five little, you know, little histories, I'm gonna just ask questions. They aren't things you have to answer. I'm just gonna shout them out. And if they help sort of like boost an idea, incorporate that into what you're writing. Are we all good with that? Is everyone like freaked out? I hope not. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> don't be, don't be. Um, and if you want to write a history of someone else's body that you know very well, that's fine too. But I want to, so I'm going to just start, I'm going to ask one question. What is the brightest thing your body has ever held? Think about that as you're writing the rest. And I'm just going to shout out. Other, say again? 
Could you repeat that? The brightest what? What is the brightest thing your body has ever held or carried? Um, and I can add that to the chat too. Burr. Ooh, the body keeps score. You're like the fifth person to tell me about this. Yes, fellow fibro gal. All right, I've got to get this body. Body keeps score. I'm so glad you reminded me. It gets it gets screamed out at me all the time, and I'm always forgetting. So what? What? I wish I could type with my arms way above my head. What brightest thing your body has ever carried or held? Boom. Oops. I didn't mean to say something privately to someone. I'm sorry. How do you unprivatize? All right, everyone publicly and privately? That seems weird. The universe is definitely sending me a memo. I agree. <laughs> what have you dreamed about since the day you were born? I'm trying to send a chat to everybody all at once. Why can't I do that? It just says Anne privately, and I'm not trying to send Anne a private message. What you will want to do, Rachel, is pu push on that little uh, carrot thing, and then that'll bring down everybody's name, and you can um, select the one you want. Well, I see there's three dots, and it says no one, host only, everyone publicly, or everyone publicly and privately. That's hey, not what I'm trying. And that's what mine's doing now. I have no answers. You want everyone, and you want everyone publicly. I, I have that, but it's still, my window only says to Anne Heitman privately. What happens so I'm when gonna you just click on Anne Heitman's name? Do you get a drop-down menu that gives you everyone? I do, yes. If you I see everyone's, I, I see like, not everyone's, now I'm at Twilight. At the top of your list should just be the option for everyone. Oh, I see. Duh. All I had to do was scroll. Nice. All right. What? I'm about to ask more questions. What is the... Oh, I don't mean to do all caps. I'm not screaming at y'all. What is the coldest thing you have ever held? in your body what is the coldest thing you have ever held in your body you do not have to be literal
What is your most expensive body part? <laughs> it could also be what has gotten you in the most trouble. is your body's soundtrack. Please don't say farts. <laughs> yeah. Mine is Forever Barracuda by heart. I just feel like when I was born that song. <laughs> stuff. The stuff. Just the most ridiculous way to put that. <laughs> Why does it say my internet is unstable? It's not true. Who has written at least one brief little thing? And it's okay if we continue our writing, obviously, beyond this. Yeah. All right. I want to try to share a poem with y'all. I know you're still writing. I Should I just, hmm. If I share my screen.
now that we've done a mad scramble, we've tried to write, you had 15 minutes. I think those 15 minutes are up. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying really hard to base that. Um, but so what I like to do when I give prompts is sort of uh, give, give writers access to doors maybe that they have closed off over time. I truly believe that when you're a kid, when you're, when you're young and small and capable of, of the entire spectrum of your imagination, uh, that you, know, you, you just have a better sight, you have a better ability um, to see and to recognize things. And as we get older, say religion, politics, society, uh, societal expectations, all of those things over time close those doors off for us. And we forget those rooms even exist in, our, in ourselves. And so I give small little prompts to sort of like help pick a lock in those rooms and uh, offer you space to sort of explore, to wander and imagine again. Um, so what I want you to do with all of the texts that you've, that you've created, even if it's just one line, it's totally fine. But now that you have like your body, you're fully committed to, you know, thinking about your body. I want you to, um, your prompt, and it doesn't have to be in this class, obviously, because we're about to end soon. Um, but uh, I do want to give us time to consider first this poem by Judith Ortiz Kofer. And um, the next the next prompt I'll, I'll give right after that is, is anyone willing to read it? Should I read it myself? I don't know what to do. I, I'll read it. Is that okay? Are we good? Does everyone see? All I see are four of you right now. I'm assuming everyone else is here, though. When you share the screen, this is what happens. Quinceanera. My dolls have been put away like dead children in a chest I will carry with me when I marry. I reach under my skirt to feel a satin slip bought for this day. It is soft as the inside of my thighs. My hair has been nailed back with my mother's black hairpins to my skull. Her hands stretched my eyes open as she twisted braids into a tight circle at the nape of my neck. I am to wash my own clothes and sheets from this day on. As if the fluids of my body were poison. As if the little trickle of blood I believe travels from my heart to the world were, were shameful. It is not the blood of saints and men, is not the blood of saints and men in battle beautiful? Do Christ's hands not bleed into your eyes from his cross? At night, I hear myself growing and wake to find my hands drifting of their own will to soothe skin stretched tight over my bones. I am wound like the guts of a clock, waiting for each hour to release me. Um, so, so this is, here, I, I'm going to keep it up, but now I can't see anybody. So what happens here? <laughs> here? Let me see. All right. Hey, I can pull you all over. Pull down the thing. I am an old lady and I love it, except for this part when I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. So here we go. <laughs> all right. So in this poem, you know, it speaks of cultural ritual right uh but i think too that there are other moments within within this particular poem too that uh provides access for others who maybe have not had this exact experience to understand too that there is a moment uh somewhere between i'd say i mean our, in our youth just as we're about to like grow into a changing body um learning to inhabit that changed body uh, you know, there are, there are rituals that we take on. And I'm really curious about those types of things because for, for some bodies too, like we don't even know who, who we are in our body yet till we're 40, till we're 89. Um, and I'm really, I'm really in love with the whole new concept of just being able to determine who we are based on who we are and not how someone else has sort of delivered and named us into this world, but our ability to, to, to state and name for ourselves who we are. But um, I, really, I really appreciate this poem for the work it does in speaking on, you know, a person who has a uterus and eventually at, one, you know, at some point like you menstruate and 
and what this means to that person, to this younger speaker, and what it means to the adults around them. Um, I'm always really like curious about my own children coming into their bodies and whether or not I'm having the right conversations. And so what I try to do obviously is, is give us as help to help liberate the body. What we first have to do is be able to name all of the parts of it. And I think that as young, as when we were younger, it's pro it's most likely that that did not happen for us. We weren't really allowed to explore and decide what our bodies were. And instead, you know, we were sort of told what, what was determined for them. Um, but I want to hear about ritual. If anyone wants to talk more about that, I think I can unshare the screen. How do you unshare? And what I'll do is I'll cut and paste this poem and put it into the chat. Um, so we can see it again. I think if I just X out, Rawr! screen sharing is stopped. Okay, as the shared window is closed. So I'm gonna tape this, or excuse me. There we go, it's in there now. Um, anyone wanna talk about ritual? Let's do it. Don't be. <laughs> Gina, did you raise your hand or were you just, <laughs> you were just wringing your hand. All right, I'm in the, I'm in the other one as well. Um, Do anyone have a morning ritual for school? Anyone get their hair brushed, picked, oiled, lotioned, any of that? Go ahead, Gina. I was actually just writing about that. Oh, I love it. Tell me more. When you gave us these, um, the body's memories. And oh, yes. Along those lines, I was writing about the ritual of it's not surprising that I was a troublemaker as a kid. And um, my mom, she wouldn't get angry. She just chased me down to my bed. And then she would brush my hair. And she would <laughs> sing, I can't smile without you. And it was never pulled. She was never angry. She always smelled of onions and cigarettes and Avon cheap perfume. And <laughs> it was just this ritual that I started to look forward to. And sometimes I think I even cause trouble just to have that. And when, <laughs> I love that. I hope you're writing that. I am. And when I got older and was in a nursing home for over a year after a car accident, there was nothing good about it except mom would show up and brush my hair. Even mm. after they shaved it, she would, because uh, I couldn't, they wouldn't take care of it. She would massage down my head. And but she everything all my accidents she always brushes my hair when i was going through addiction she would come and brush my hair she never got angry she just brushed my hair so that's, that's a ritual i i love that you have um i love that that seems that's that turned into like kind of a ritual of of love and not so much uh punishment which <laughs> my hair my hair being combed through was always a punishment um, oh it hurts <laughs> oh yeah for sure um but I, I i appreciate that intimacy of that moment and you sharing that and um you know considering as a writer how to go about sharing that i would ask of course that you include an element an impossible element within that uh ritual right invite invite your po your your poet brain into the room when you're doing stuff. I think that what happens a lot of times when we're dealing with writing about a specific memory is that we we are unwilling to allow that kind of, you know, we, we don't want we don't want to derail the 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 truth of it, but really the truth of it is should always be that there is a lawlessness to what we write and how we write about our experiences in order to make them the most true, you know, for ourselves. Uh, you definitely uh, having this, this big in. data, this clot of data in your in your experience. Um, I, and you know, of I course, don't have to write about a personal experience either to write of the body. That was a trait of her. Who was her speaking? Mental illness. Oh, yeah. So I led that into her mental illness. So that was a trait of her. Mm. Sure. Anyone yeah. else have any? Uh, Thing they want to speak on before we uh we have ten more minutes to talk. Um, I so I yeah I don't 
I don't think it's very fun to just sit down and suddenly write. I just have to like kind of gather information and I hope the same is happening for y'all. Um, I love the idea of inheritance and the body and say like one thing that is like specific, like a blood inheritance most likely. And some of us who don't know who are, you know, like who we come from, and that's, you know, a very real thing that can happen for folks. My friend Jan Beatty and I, she's a remarkable poet. Uh, we've talked about that and that like, I know, I know that mental illness for me, I know exactly where it came from. For the most part, I know what I've inherited. And, um, you know, and then there are other instances where like Jan was like, well, I have, I know that I found out that my birth father had a temper. So I understand where that comes from, but I'm really curious as to like where we inherit our joy and where we carry that in the body and where we inherit, who we inherited our wonder from and our imagination. There are things, of course, that we build inside of our bodies ourselves, but I like to think that there is a lineage, right? Um, and that uh, it's important to name those things or to make them up if we need to, in order to, to have a proper origin story. I have, there's a poem of mine where I talk about the day I was born, which, you know, I think that the best witness was myself. Um, and because I had, what I would say, unreliable narrators my entire life, um, just because I was born into a family of alcoholics and drug addicts and bullshitters, um, no one ever really gave me an exact, you know, just like uh, memories that I had for myself. And so I decided, I just, design them for myself for a long time to survive. And um, it doesn't mean you have to struggle in order to write good shit, of course. Just any of, of the folks who are, let's see, is here? I mean, I don't know. I. I think that uh, truly too, I, in speaking with my partner, who's, who, you know, I think was raised in a way to not honor, to not honor, to not know to honor his, his body. Uh, it's very important too for, for all of us folks to figure out ways to, I don't know, write an anthem for the self. If you don't know, uh, let's see, I'm trying to think. You know, what is it? Instructions for a Body by Marty McConnell is a really good one where uh, she goes down the line. I can probably find it online for you too. <laughs> Let's see here. I will share it in a chat just a second. <clears throat> anyone having trouble? Is anyone like, you know what? I need some more stuff because I can throw out a whole bunch of prompts at you. Before I find a yes, go ahead, Sheila. Unmute. Unmute. Can you hear me now? I can. Oh, great, great. Um, I could not write a thing. That there was so much thrown at me that I couldn't handle one thought at all. So I, I couldn't. Okay. I, I have some understood notes, but they're not really notes that have to do. I I don't think with any of the prompts that you said or anything that you said. I just tried to push myself to try to think of getting loose in some way. Mm. Something. Yeah, and that's that's often the point um, is because I think that when we are given one uh, for me, and this in, this is just the way I often do it. I feel like if I focus on like say one question or one prompt, um, I stick there. So I need kind of like chaos. I need a whole bunch of different <laughs> ideas to come because my brain will settle on one thing that it can grab out. But like, again, these prompts are never, like they're not rules ever. Mm -hmm. My prompts are only sort of just sort of like invoke or to conjure an idea that maybe you hadn't thought of, uh, you know, yeah. in a while. I have, there's a prompt I do where I ask 100 questions and I just rattle them off and people want to go like, wait, what was question 15? And I'm like, that doesn't matter. Okay. Keep going. Like the thing that is meant to be in your head is going to stick there. Um, so don't ever get mad at yourself. I do not know how to write in settings like this. I can't be given a thing and like come up with it. I have to like, 
let it marinate for a minute and um and then finally come back to it and hopefully have something have sparked from all of that thought process but yeah no there's no demands of you having to write anything in this moment right now kelly do you, is, it, is your hand up or are you just resting your hand kelly <laughs> kelly wait and i hear Sheila, someone the, the poem that sheila might write might come in like an hour <laughs> Oh, um, right. Well, I did get one thing that I thought was quite interesting is one of my fingers is exactly like all of my dad's fingers, and it's the um, it's a middle finger. Oh, I love it. <laughs> but the, and there's a whole. Well, that's, there's there you are, my friend. That's perfect. I was gonna say that's and all I you. Waited, I waited. I wow. waited. Maybe I think it'd be really great to write a moment of like creative nonfiction. It doesn't even have to be poetry, right? It could be anything, mm -hmm. an account of that finger and of like <laughs> just like a day in the life of that finger a persona poem of that finger um mm -hmm. how that finger that specific you know fuck you came to be like i i think that's such a uh, a beautiful way to do that um mm -hmm. and, and and again that's the thing is that i'm throwing out a whole bunch of stuff and what i can do is send you all of the questions i asked oh, and you. could ask i have tons and um, I, it's one of my favorite prompts is just to sit everyone in the room and literally rattle off a hundred prompts all at once. Um, because I think that, whew, I mean, I, I, I just don't believe, I, I don't believe that like we're always just processing one thing at a time. Like it'll, it'll come back to you later, but Sheila, that is such a perfect jumping off point for any piece of writing. Um, I don't know my, it's so funny. I know my father's fists. I don't know his hands at all. Yeah, uh, so I would never be able to write that, but I love, I love that idea. Um, can you hear me? Anyone else have stuff to say? Let's move on. I'm going to keep talking to folks. Well, one thing I wanted to throw Twyla? in. Oh, if I could just throw in quick, what I'm going to do after this is over, I'm recording it. I'm going to try to put it on YouTube and send a link to everyone who's here. If anybody objects, I won't make it public, but otherwise all of us can look back at the prompts and the discussion. That'd be great. If no one's gonna say something, but we're still allowed to say things, <laughs> I was gonna talk about how I inherited the lack of something from my dad. This tooth, gratefully you can't see, uh, is fake. And my dad didn't have this tooth. So I inherited the lack of a tooth. He got it kicked out by a 13 year old neighbor girl when he was a kid. Some stupid like, oh, bet you can't kick me in the face. And she's like, bet I can, and she did. And so she popped the tooth out of my dad's face. And when I was a you know teenager with, a mangled already mouth going through orthodontics and whatnot. Uh, they did x-rays and stuff and figured out that I didn't have that tooth either, which seems like strange because it's too quick for, I don't know what it's too quick for, but I don't have that tooth. Kicked that teeth out of generations of faces. I'm saying, yeah, apparently so, who knew? So that was, that was the thing that I thought was Love interesting. That. I used to like, it was attached to a retainer in high school and I could like, pop it out. I still have that sense memory of like the way I suck my retainer out and pop the tooth out. It's, it's permanently in there now, but I just was thinking about how it's kind of an interesting inheritance of nothingness. I don't know. Oh yeah. Yeah. The inheritance of absence, the yeah. inheritance yeah. of a void, the inheritance, yeah. right. Of, I, I, I love that. I love that idea. It's an excellent idea. And I think that too, it's interesting because everyone in my family, family has the same missing tooth that has just suffered a bad root canal and has been pulled like I'm talking about my grandma all four of my uncles my dad and myself we have the same tooth we we're like what is that like what is that even about but I, I never even thought to do a poem about that yeah I like that idea um and and what's interesting too is that um what most people have a hard time writing about is teeth and feet um, for, for many reasons, you know, I mean, I mean, teeth too are a representation of like class status for, you know, so many in the world. Um, 
And so what I often ask, I'm like, well, let's just list memories about, facts about, images having to do with, and your feelings about, and your relationship with your teeth. And most often than not, that's when people are like, <gasps> um, it has such a history. Teeth, teeth themselves are, they're a whole other character. Um, I really, I really love that. Anyone else have uh, stuff they want to talk about? I can give you some other pointers, some other prompts. I'm going from one page to the other. Everyone seems frozen. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, it's 2.30. So I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. Um, and this is just what I do. And you can tie it into what the ideas you've already come up with are. Um, but I'm going to ask you a bunch of questions. And when there's one that you think, ah, I can write into that, write that question down and write into that. Are we ready? I'm going to ask a whole bunch. Here. All right. Where is the last place you found salvation? What could have been tragic, but wasn't? How would you describe her if you could only use animals to do it? What is the worst shape, worst sound, worst smell? What is the longest you have held someone? What would you give a stranger that you would never give someone you loved? What is the one thing that always lets you know it is the capital E end? What do you deserve right now? Where does your death reside today? What belongs to no one else but you? Name your plague. What is the sweetest thing you ever held in your mouth? Who was the coldest person you ever wanted? What survived despite its wounds? What hides beneath the soil of your home state? What sound does your skin make in joy? What is the biggest thing you've ever killed? What song was written in, your in the blood of your body? Describe safe. How many second chances have you given? What was your most expensive hour? When do you deserve to be praised? What did you give away that you hoped would come back? Describe love in five sounds. Describe love in five images. Describe your childhood in five phrases. Uh, you, you've written. But what I want you to do, hopefully, 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 is write about a ritual or some magic that your body has, has produced. hours but I'm still here to hang out and is Rachel breaking up for more than just me yes yes okay. I'm sending your notes cool. I'm gonna log off Really good to see everybody. Yes. And next, week. next week, KDFS will be leading the writing workshop next week. So it'll be great. That, and we'll be back um, awesome. with her. And Thank it'll be my all. birthday. <laughs> yeah, it's KDFS. Oh, Friday. And I would like nothing more than to spend it with you. Okay. Thank you, Rachel. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Go away. What happened? <laughs> Am I still here? You're still here.